flight instructors uh, who since passed away, but really knowledgeable guy, very wise, told me when it comes to flying, flying is the artful application of a scientific process. It's a great quote and it, it works true in aviation, but it also holds true in photography. You can have all of this really expensive equipment, the newest cameras, um, but if you aren't artful about it and you don't have that photographer's eye, so to speak, then it, it doesn't really matter um, who's taking the picture. So uh, when it comes to photography, I, I tell people that the best camera that you can have is the one in your hand. You know, don't worry about um, you know, the lens, the camera. They say that professionals worry about money, amateurs worry about equipment, and uh, masters worry about light. So I'll talk a little bit about lighting, but when it comes to photography, just your imagination and the lighting uh, are the two most important things. So as far as the scientific part of it, there's the shutter speed, which is how fast the shutter is open. There's ISO, which is the sensitivity of the, uh, the camera. And then there is the f-stop, which is uh, the aperture. You may have heard about the term aperture. And what that is, is basically it's like the pupil in your eyeball. So when it's really, really low light, um, like the sun's coming up or the sun's setting, you want to have a really wide aperture, uh, which is a, actually a small f-stop. So that unfortunately can get pretty pricey when it comes to lenses, um, but it's just part of the, the scientific part of, of uh, photography. Um, and shutter speed is, and you'll see, sometimes you'll see a lot of pictures of, let's say, a, a Mustang flying by. Um, and if you have a really high shutter speed, the airplane might be in focus, but the propeller is going to be frozen. And naturally, that's not really how our eyes see uh, the airplane. So you got to think about the aperture, low light, um, the f stop, or excuse me, the shutter speed for the propeller, and then the ISO. So if it's really, really dark out, you want your ISO to be um, high, so it's more sensitive. And like everything in life, there's always a compromise, right? So if the ISO is really high, it's really sensitive, but there's a lot of noise. And what, what noise is when it comes to photography, um, it's like static. It's like visual static that, that you can see. And the compromise with the f-stop is if you have a really, really um, large f-stop, which is a small number, like let's say f2.8 or f1.8 on the lens, the good thing about that is that it'll um, allow shooting and, and photography in low light but you have a very, very shallow depth of field. So what's great about that is that it'll isolate the subject, uh, but what's bad about that is you have such a shallow depth of field that if the airplane or whatever your object is is not in focus, um, then everything is gonna be blurry because you missed the focus. Or conversely, if you have a high f-stop, like let's say f8 for example, the airplane's in focus, but so is the car in the background, the fence and all the other stuff that, that you didn't want. So, Kind of think about that. Um, and as far as lighting goes, I've had a, a couple pictures uh, published in magazines, and people reach out and they're like, "Hey, this is a you know, this is a great shot. You know, how did you get the? You know, what's your editing process?" And a lot of times, I really don't edit my pictures much at all. Um, the trick is is that I don't work a lot, um, like most airline pilots. So what I do is I go out really early in the morning and really late in the afternoon, and that's called golden hour. And basically the sun comes up, you have an hour of really, really soft lighting. And then an hour before the sun goes down, you have the same soft lighting. So if you go out now and in about a half an hour, you'll see the air show. And it's, it's great because you can see everything, but the lighting is really, really harsh. So it's not, you know, it's hard to get a really good picture, a uh, picture that has emotion in it or tells a story. Um, so those are two things that you got to think about. Um, and there's also, you know, if you're just starting out for photography, there's just a really simple concept. It's the rule of thirds. So rather than just have, you know, like this Mustang out here, for example, just in the center of the frame, you can have the Mustang in the bottom left, and then you can have the sun and fun, sun and fun flags in the middle, and then the top right, you can have, you know, the control tower or something like that. So you kind of want to break up the picture and not just have the airplane right in the center. Um, and the thing with photography too, and it's like anything in life, you know, you just, you really have to just try different things, different camera angles. Um, I've had a couple videos um, that I guess went viral, you could say, because I just put the camera in a really random spot and got a really different perspective um, that's different from your usual photograph. So I just, I encourage people to just try different things and just go out there and just post as much stuff as you can. Because the whole point 
for me and I think a lot of people when it comes to aviation photography is you want, you want to share your joy and your love of photography and you hope that somebody out there is going to see a picture of like my airplane it's an old Piper Cub. So I love when people are like, hey, what kind of airplane is that? And I'm like, oh, it's a Cub. And they're like, oh, what, you know, what year is it from? And I'm like, it's from 1941. Uh, it doesn't have an electrical system. And they're like, oh my God, that's incredible. It's so cool. Um, you know, how much is that? A hundred grand? And I'm like, no, actually, my Cub is cost much less than your typical used car. So that's what I think is great about it is you just you, you get all the stuff out there on social media, on print, and it hopefully piques people's interest um, in aviation just by seeing the stuff in the magazines or online.